All right, guys, GoToBoy32 here. Check it out. This is the next step in the evolution of our economic three-gun rifle and our balls-to-the-wall three-gun rifle. Now, what do we have here? I've got two different hand guards, and the reason we're doing this is in the process, we, well, we've got to do the barrel nuts because, the well, we're all nuts. In any case, what I want to do is I need to go ahead and finish putting the uh, accurizing these upper receivers so the next step is we need to take a look at these things okay so what did I look at me most importantly what do I look at in a handguard well um, I want something well ideally what this guy right here has uh, but on our economic brand we've got this gun tech and this was brought to us sent to us by the good folks over there at optics planet and these are really good economical handguards uh, one of the things that I have, uh, I'm looking at right here is that with the barrel nut, it's solid steel, but you also have these uh, screw holes right here. So what has to happen on this particular handguard is you have to put those spacers in in order to time the handguard and the holes right here. Me, personally, I'm not a big fan of that whole process. It is what it is, though. I've got a bunch of these shims. It's just not a big deal. You just got to do the timing. This guy right here, this is the Midwest Industries. Uh, this handguard pretty much has the same features as this handguard. This guy right here, as you can see, the anodizing. <laughs> this guy has a pick rail all the way across the top. It's really light. Uh, this particular handguard has some knurling on it as well. Then it has a strengthening rib on, on the top. They didn't get rid of this like the uh, guys over there at uh, Palmetto State Armory do. They went ahead and kept this in because it does add strength to it. Uh, it also has a QD mount right here, swivel port and a swivel port right there. You do have an extension. Uh, you know what? I don't know if those are... No, those are just... No, wait a minute. Yeah, those are just holes. Uh, so you've got some spacing holes right here along the pick rail. So you can put a, uh, what do you call it, a uh, front uh, backup iron sight on there, or you can put a light. You do have a uh, set of M locks. Now, I am an M lock guy. I, I moved away from the, uh, what do you call those things, the key mod quite a long time ago. Most or all of my accessories are uh, M lock. <laughs> but you have M lock along the sides along the bottom and there you go uh, the only advantage that you have actually on this guy is you did have a pick rail all the way across the top as you can see but guys in the big scheme of things uh, these hand guards are very similar uh, are, is the anodization probably a little bit better on the uh, the Midwest Industries it's been my experience in the past that uh, most of your economical hand guards are um, the anodization is just a little bit on the wanting side. This guy right here does come with a full series. You've got some, you have a uh, polymer, which I'm not a big fan of polymer uh, rail sections. Again, this is key mod. Uh, you do have a, a item right here, and what that does is it will square your receiver up with the handguard. I, my particular receiver this guy right here will not work with that so we've elected to go ahead and not use that now the barrel nut on this thing is knurled and you know what the reason I'm doing this specific type of review uh, in comparison is you get to see a little bit about everything involved but there are so many more in detailed reviews on a handguard and I don't know how many different ways you can review a handguard other than taking a look at it it's beautiful. Look at that thing. The lines on it, it's really, really light. And we're going to do a, uh, we'll do a weight comparison here in a few seconds. But the barrel nut, as you can see, has some knurling right there and it catches. But you don't have to worry about uh, sinking this thing up. All you do is you put it on there and you go. And we need the barrel nut in order to put this beautiful proof barrel on this rifle as well as this really beautiful Bear Creek Arsenal. Gun Tech. GunTech Scottsdale, Arizona. This thing is made in the USA. That was one of the questions I had. Of course, I would hope Midwest Industries is made in the USA. And uh, I don't have time to sit here and look for it, but I'm pretty sure that it is, as most of their stuff is. 
I've only had one issue out of a Midwest Industry product, and that was a handguard uh, that they made for the AK-47. So let's do this real quickly. Let's put all this to the side. And I want to take the barrel nuts. I'm not worried about the screws. And let's weigh these guys out just so we can see where are the advantages? Now we know we're a lot heavier with the barrel from uh, Proof Research than we are with the uh, Bear Creek Arsenal. But the handguard, make sure you guys can see those numbers. There they are right there. Okay, 13.2 uh, ounces with the barrel nut. Midwest Industries, it's 9.4. That is a considerable difference. Uh, let's just see where is the difference. The handguard itself, 7.9, 8.8. So there's only one ounce difference in the rail itself. What does that mean to me? Well, that means that the, the front's not gonna be as heavy. Uh, but here's the difference, the majority of the weight, 4.4 and 1.5. Okay, so there's the biggest difference right there. Uh, which one would I pick? Well, of course I'd like the, the Midwest Industries. And I think that given the option, I would probably try to pick a handguard that had a uh, QD uh, receiver like this guy right here does. But I tell you what, you always pick what you can choose. And uh, man, I really appreciate the guys over there at uh, Optics Planet for sending this out. Again, uh, if you want a discount at your Optics Planet, it's, it's KB32 TAC, get 5% off your order. All right, so let's do this. I am going to go ahead and start the process to install the barrels on these two receivers. And the nice thing is, is they have to sit for about 24 hours before you can do anything. This uh, locking little piece right here, again, like I said, it does not work with the Rainier arms, but it will work on your uh, mil spec receivers. And that's what keeps the handguard from moving around. I'm just gonna elect not to even install it. All right, with that being said, guys, uh, the next step after we get these things installed is uh, we'll go ahead and start looking at gas blocks. What's the difference in the gas blocks? And there is a difference. Let's go to Boy32. If you like this short little series, please let me know. If you got any questions or if you have anything that's positive that you may add to the conversation, please feel free to add down the com in the comments section. And I'm really excited about this. Uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing uh, how these two compare. Uh, and what we may do, uh, because I have, uh, I'm waiting on some lower parts kits to come in, I'll go ahead and put these uppers together. We'll take them out and test fire. Let's go to Boy32. Like the video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already done so. Sport the red, white, and blue. God bless America. I'm hungry. God bless those men, women in uniform, 24-7-4. Freedom is freedom's not free. Man, those are pretty, aren't they? Not bad. But this is cool, man. We're able to do a little bit of something for everybody in this series. Let's go. <laughs> Which I like. Let's go to Boy32. I'm out.